So Jason, we came out here to Ben Murphy's farm here in Nakraha um, to see his calf set up. You've had a big part in this. And uh, maybe just give an intro for Donovan's and what you do with them. Yeah, I suppose I, I came out here on farm and I met Ben. Um, he wanted to build a new calf shed, so I suppose he had the same, he wanted to solve the same problems as every other dairy farmer putting up a new calf shed. Easy manage, labour saving, and um, I suppose pelt of calves to something that will reduce cost um, and, as I said, reduce labour and easy to manage, just something to a modern calf shed that is easy to work. Yeah. Do you so, know? So, so, so we're coming up to the end of October now, so you're, you've obviously getting a lot of inquiries from dairy farmers or yeah, well, I suppose we're, yeah, we're well into the calf housing now at this stage. Um, so with lead time and everything, and um, you're kind of, most of the calf houses now are kind of, you're, you're in design stage now, or um, we're kind of, a lot of them say we're going past design stage, we're kind of really into making gates now and getting yeah. fitted out and, yeah. and ready for the season ahead um, for calving kind of January on to February again. Okay. Um, but it's, um, I suppose, as... As you're aware, in recent years, there has been a big emphasis on calf capacity in sheds, and um, I suppose with the with the legislation and stuff like that, it's it's been able to hold calves longer and more calves inside in sheds. And um, it's I suppose farmers, you can see clearly, even farmers are more concerned about it, and um, they're building sheds in accordance with what's coming down the line. Right. Yeah. Very good. So let's have a tour inside, and you can go through what what you've supplied and. So early stage calves here anyway, so your pens. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's something I kind of personally like to see in a farm. Like you have the starter calves. It's just, um, it's a bit, you know, I suppose it's a better system really. I find for when you're starting off, give calves a good start. Like they have their own individual um, pins. You know, and they can um, you can fit two calves if you're really caught for space. But something like here, now you you have a reasonable number of pins as well for the way compact calving has gone and the way sex semen has gone. Now um, you have a lot of good quality calves coming coming fast and coming together. So you do need you need a bit of care and attention in the first couple of weeks. And the individual calf pins do give that, whether the group pins won't. Um, and I think it's important really and I suppose any farm that has put in that I've come across farmers with feedback from farmers who have put in a few individual calf pins and the group pinning they've seen is a better I suppose a better they've been more content with that system than just group pins alone okay from that early stage from yes, day, day where, one or whatever. whereas four or five years ago there was an emphasis to go away from the individual calves to more group pinning and you know it, it's kind of I suppose a lot of people got concerns that maybe it was just too big a step really for some calves, you know. Okay. And I suppose the cost of sex semen now and the cost of producing a calf, you just really need to look after them and mind them. Yeah. So what features have, has this pen here? Is there anything that sends out there to you? Well, basically you have your two bucket rings in, in this pin here. Um, in this pin, you, know, you see two, there's two calves in this pin here. You have your stay bar at the back, the wall at the back of it, just to, to keep it simple. But the main, the main thing here is, um, I suppose, the, the cleanliness of it. Like, you have a nice footpath here. You have, a, you have kind of a, a deeper area here where the calf sits into. So you have a nice clean area here. Calves are nice and draw, dry because you have a plastic slat system underneath the calves. Um, Some people would have timber slats. I know we had them long ago for me, and it was a timber slat, I'd say, possibly. Yeah, it was, but, yeah. yeah um, I suppose... Like it's still an option, really, but we've very little um, demand for the timber yeah, slat anymore. It's, it's just it's washing or stabler. And, and, yeah, it's yeah. cleany, and yeah. you just run the power wash on it, and you can stack everything when you're finished in the end of the year, yeah. and wash everything out, and it's nice and clean. I suppose we're here with Ben. He's kind of calving twice a year, like so. He's calving the autumn, and um, again the spring. So he's kind of getting good use out of out of them, and you know, it it kind of works well. No, there is. Um, I just don't see it here now, but there is. Um, you can get a. A calf nipple, a blank here, which is very, which is very handy too for starting calves. Also, your you'd hang your bucket ring up here. Your bucket nipple would go through here, but the calf can't get at the bucket. So, especially when you're working with a system down there where you actually want to get the calf sucking, 
it, it might be, you know, it, it's advisable to get that, like, in one sense, to just get them stuck in you that are not okay. skin to be. It's kind of a gonna... dummy teat, is it? Yes. Yeah. Well, like, if you're, well, it's, well, no, the teat is real, but yeah. it's just uh, they can't get at the bucket. Okay. And like, if you're out here two or three o'clock in the morning, you're trying to feed a calf and you went to the trouble getting the bee stings, yes. you, know, you know, on them spilling okay. it, like, so. Mm. Just put in your bucket there, hang it off there, and it'll work away. Like, and they can't, they can't spill it. Right. If you um, don't have a wall behind the calf, is there a back frame, or are you always depending on a wall? Say? Well, like we can make back frames. Yeah. Usually, farmers um, kind of will put them by a wall, um, or they might put them back to back and put pallets or stockboard or something between them. But yeah. um, normally, they are against the wall. Okay. Um, either one side or two sides of the shed. Yes. And you so just this, this is for two calves, is it? Do you have, have you more, have you narrower ones for? No, it's the one size, but like size. You, you can see there, like two calves are quite comfortable in it. You've, you've one calf here in this one. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like when you have the setup of the, the shed below there for, you know, for your group pinning, like you're never really going to be under pressure for space here. Like once you have a reasonable amount of pins, you know, in, in this instance now, there's a good few, like, but I will say a smaller farm, you know, a smaller herd, you might get away with 10 calf pins or something like it pins, but it's just they come together calves okay. in one glut, like, you just need to give them that, that space to, to start off, yeah. really, like. Yeah, and find their feet. Yeah. Right, let's move on, so, to the next stage. Yeah, let's look again, what, what makes a good calf pin, Jason, what, what do you think from the farms you're going around or what, what you try and design? Um, look, I suppose the main thing we have here is, like, it's... Um, a good decent straw bed i suppose the the layout of this shed again was based on easy management um it was based on being able to clean out the calves health of the calves um respiratory diseases and stuff like that to to, to erase those as much as possible um so what we have here is effectively pins that were here designed really for bull calves and towards the back of the shed and this side of the shed then was designed for heifer calves mm. Typical guidelines and space and widths, um, say, what's your, your, your ideal pen size for how many calves? Well, I suppose the department regulations are kind of 1.5 square metres of, of lying space per calf. Um, so we try to adhere to that where we can. Um, and we advise farmers based on how many calves they can fit in based on that figure. Um, but ordinarily, like what you, an ideal calf house you kind of want a, such an area where you can lock the calves in the wet area mm -hmm. or you can lock the calves in the straw bedded area so hence the, the gate here would be the same size as the first gate on this side and then the gate at the back then would be the balance so let's say if you went to um, a 40 foot shed 40 foot wide shed you might have 10 foot of a feed space um, out in the passage in front for your we'll say your pallet of, of milk powder the nuts and all that, and you'll have um, 10 feet here and 20 feet in a straw bedded area would be right. a good a good size shed. Yeah. But again, like you, you've, it's the one thing you'll find in calf sheds. Is there's no, there's no two calf sheds the same. Um, hence the fact that nearly everything is made up specially for them and designed for them. But um, that that would be a kind of a relatively common there thereabouts size of a shed. Fall then, say you recommended fall then for drainage. Um, well, I suppose one in 20 fall is kind of what's being recommended in TAMS and the department, so a lot of farmers are adhering to that. Um, some farmers, if, they're, if the shed is very deep, going back along the shed a long way, um, they might have an extra, they might have a narrow shed in front, but going back a long ways, they, they might find that very severe, because like if you were talking about going back, um, we'll say, let's say a 10 meter shed back yeah. you're talking about one in 20 fall is a fair it's a, it's a fair hill yeah. from the back like mm. so they might um they might moderate that a small bit okay um but a shed kind of 20 foot deep you'd get away with the one in 20 fall right you know okay i suppose again with the event the way sex semen is 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 progressing um there is a um, calf feeding station down here in the bottom we can look at it there later on um and you can actually turn two or three of these pins into one big group pin if you want to let the heifers have access to this side as well but predominantly this was designed for bull calves okay so you have a sheeted gate here on top you have um a storage area up here on top which can be used as a calf pin if needed yeah um but these trucks were designed in specially that you could literally sit buck buckets into them if you wanted to bucket feed the calves and you could use them for nuts as well after if you wanted to you have your hay racks there and, and all those gates can fall back by the wall then for cleaning out so you have a clean run up through the shed right um and you can see you have a drainage system in there in front as well okay um your drinking bowls here every second pin 
for, for the calves. Yeah. So this gate here then, say, is that a standard gate you supply for most pens, an access gate? or? Well, it's a spring-loaded gate, so it's just easy to access to get in and out of the pin. Like, you know, it's just makes the thing a small bit easier to, to, to walk into rather than, um, rather than a big gate with calves the whole time where you just want to open the gate and you have calves rushing out against you. So it's something there's, there's more of a demand of recently. It's just make, again, ease if you want to take a calf from above there into here. Again, you have the same here on this side for the heifer calves. You have the spring-loaded gate as well for them. Okay. So you know, so you have good strong spring in it, like you don't have a risk of calves. Do you need a double pillar for that arrangement there? No. Or would one do? No, one will do. Yeah. Um, just... That's the way that's done there. And say this gate here then, say what, what's the benefit of that or the functionality? Well, that's here? just a, it's, it's a just frame. a blank really, like yeah. so and you don't need a drinker in every pin. Well, like this was originally supposed to be a storage area here. Yeah. There wasn't um, supposed to be um, a drinking facility here, but the, this, this panel could be swapped out for a drinking panel. But um, effectively you have a drinker panel every, every second one down long okay. and you have a blanked in. So that would be, that would be your blanked in. What just functionalities on that, Jason, there? Um, you just have your standard LAC-5 drinking, drinking bowl um, with, with metal surround um, and fed in from the bottom so it'll, it'll comfortably do two good pins of calves. Um, there's a good flow in it. They're a very good high quality drinker. Like I suppose the, the, there is, um, it's one thing that, you know, they last a long time in farms. We have very little issues. We have all the parts for them. So it's not like a case of if something goes wrong, you're ripping out the drinker. You just, you just get the part for it and off you go again. Okay, and what, um, what's this, the likes of those brackets there for? Yeah, you can adjust these again for everything in calf houses. It's kind of designed adjustable, so your frame is adjustable, your gates are adjustable. Also, you can adjust this up to the size of the head of the calf as well. So if the calves get bigger, you can adjust them up really. Um, that's also true of the gates here. Like again, you can start off low to the ground for the smaller calves. As they get bigger and stronger, you can rise them up. Okay, um, and you're rising up base with the clamp below, is it? No, you're rising here right. with the nut inside here. There's okay. two studs here. You can see it better on this gate here, okay. like you have a stud here and a stud here. Okay. So you've adjustment. You've um, on this gate you've adjustment in two options. You've adjustment here, and you've adjustment with the hangers as well. You can slide them up. Whereas on this side here, with the, on the heifer side, you've three levels of adjustment. You have again your st your studs on the gate. Um, they're just on the other side there of it this time. Um, but you have adjustment here in the neck rail as well, and you have adjustment in the hangers. Okay, and that's just squeezing in and tightening the space, basically. It's yeah. not going into holes as such, is it? It's just creating pressure against the other. Yeah, box. it's just yeah, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's it's something it's something very um, useful, really, because you, like, I suppose you're always in a position you can lock the gate. The hanger, the keepers are again are adjustable again, so you can loosen those and slide them up and down the pole to, to just, it's all about ease and management of your shed, like so you can adjust what you have at all stages for, for the calves. And again, the divide gates there, which is, I suppose, is the same thing. You can adjust those, the height of those. It's more important on this side, really, where you have the deep bed straw. So if you're in a system where you just want to bed this, this, the shed for the whole winter, you're like some farmers will clean sheds out fairly regularly. Other people will just bed them up for the winter. Um, again, you can rise that up. You can see the height of that one there. Now it's up the top of the heel bar. Yeah. Whereas, um, let's say a gate over here now is kind of down to the bottom. So you yeah. have that much, <clears throat> you have a good foot of space there that you can rise the gate up that it's not getting caught in the straw. Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than going to a shed in the winter time and when you're coming back to March, April and you see the bottom of the gate stuck in straw. Yeah six inches up over the gate and you're trying to open it and lift the gate and you're straining the gate, hit it with a load or something to move it and just break your gate, so. Yeah, um, your diagonal, so you have a diagonal gate here. Say, why would someone consider a diagonal gate versus the one here? On the it, it was really because of the buckets here. Yeah. It, like this truck was specially designed so that you could sit the buckets into, the, so the bars here are made for that, so. Um, you could sit the buckets into, we used to do them years ago, but um, this farmer was looking for one of them again, Ben was looking for one there again. But um, that's why the diagonal has gone in here, because we'd normally push for the diagonal rail barrier, or sorry, the, the straight rail barrier, um, because when your calves are drinking out of a truck like this, you like the calves to flow, that they're not pulling their head out and spilling and pulling their head back again. But in this instance, with the diagonal, they're feeding out of buckets. More so, control, so each calf yeah. has their own bucket. Right. And um, it's, it, you don't want the calves then sliding up and down to, yeah. to spill the buckets or, or, or steal from each other. Yeah. Okay. So you have a hay feeder as well, have you? On the left there? 
Yeah, they're, they're kind or of um, they're all calf hay feeders there for the individual calf pins. I suppose on this side here you have the the more the one that's more used for the group pins. So it's a good half bale um, each side of the gate hay rack. Um, yeah. So that's kind of one one hay rack per two pins. Like okay. It's kind of back to back. And I suppose here, yeah, you can see the pin here now that's kind of uh, this, like you have four heifer pins and you have your four bull pins. But as you can see here, this gate here can be open, closed back against the wall and you can make this into a bigger pin for the heifers if you need to. Okay. And again, you can, you can close this gate up against the wall as well and you have a very big pin then for heifers. So you're maximizing this feed station here. So the gate here to the side of you is it's it's a bit longer than the other the other ones. Yeah, it's just this here is that is that specifically made for this site or is it something off the shelf that you'd have? No, it's or? just specifically made. Like every every gate in this shed really was made specifically for the shed. So um, I suppose like we got, we we did a site visit um, probably six months before the shed was completed, and we went through everything what needed to be done. Um, uh, Bin was anxious to put in um, the slats here, the plastic slats, so he was anxious to do a, a kind of a small a four foot pit underneath it. Mm. Um, so we went through what was needed for it and then um, we scheduled out when the poles would be stood and what was needed for it, the costs of it, um, designed all the layout and we were kind of chewing and throwing back a bit to get the final, the finer detail on the, the layout of it. Like, but, um, Again, here, you're, this is the result of a gate that just needed to be made to suit this size. Right. It was left over, really, because um, you have your stations. So everything is, is based around putting your stations in the right place. Ideally, you want a small access gate close to the station to, to get in to feed calves. Um, to get around it. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the rest in is that you need a decent side feed space in as well. Okay. So as you can see here, we, in this side is again, we had to put um, to maximize the feed space for that pin we put in a kind of an access gate feed gate here, as opposed to this side here, we have an access gate pedestrian gate. Um, but again, like it was just to maximize space again for your feeders here. Um, and down here then just walk down through it so you could feed both sides there okay. with nuts. Yeah. It just gives you more space or more access. Yeah, just it's just basically just to, like he was there was no space up here to feed really only just that gate and it wasn't gonna suffice for a pin that would hold we'll say twenty eight to thirty calves so um, it was it was I it was just yeah. that was the ideal solution there to just looking to at the it. hangers here just on the small detail on that how you engineer it say looking at this one below here say why is there a plate at the bottom that's very important in hangers. Um, because your gate sits down on that so the gate can't drop. So when you go to closing your gate in five or ten years time, it's going to close into the latch, the hole in the latch the same as it will first day. Because the gate, the hanger has no place, the gate has no place to go, it's sitting on a sound footing. So like you've, you've ten, you, you, you've ten mil, you have a ten mil thick hanger there, like, you know, and it's not going to go anywhere, like it's just, um, it's solid, like, so yeah. it sits into it. Because most gates, a lot of gates would just sit on that on itself and it would, would possibly wear with it. Well, where there's no base underneath, say, where that's not there, say. Well, see, a lot of gates, they mightn't have, they mightn't have a base at all under. Correct, most like, wouldn't, I'd say. The, yeah. And, and yeah. you're just wearing on the yeah. heel bar of the gate the whole time. Then. So, like, if you're dropping here, even just two mil, by the time you get to the end of the gate, you're probably dropping ten mil. Right. So, it's, it's just, you, like, you, look, you still have the adjustment in the, the heel bar here that you can adjust it up and down, but, okay. like, we'll use the same hangers for all the throat, or we'll say whether they're sheep gates or cattle gates or yeah. inside in the yards, it's the same set of hangers we use, but, like, you don't have the same adjustment with a five-bar gate across a yard, so you really have to have it in such a way that you don't, and you're walking over gates, you're standing up and gates climbing over them, yeah. they're all, you're always putting of, pressure on them, so... Yeah. It's so, longevity, really. Like you know, you want the thing to be worked the same way in ten years' time as it does the day you put it in, really. And so, the gate, a gate like this typically won't come off as such. Then, once those once those brackets are on, she's there to stay in a way. Is it? You can't yeah. like lift that off like you might a five bar gate. A or... gate like this now is 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 designed not to come off. Right, yeah. you can always unbolt your hangers here, but there is other hangers. Um, we'd say if you take the hanger over there, or the hanger actually, sorry, over there behind you, um, this hanger here is designed that you could effectively, if you wanted to take the gate off regularly, you could keep it a small bit higher up. And when you turn the gate, 
It's this, this here is doing the, the this, protection, this is, really. Yes, is that's stopping the gate from lifting off. When it's in the closed yeah. position, yeah. 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 So it's, it, that that's, would be the case with most of the hangers, to be honest. That's just the design, especially for an end wall, where you don't want the gate to come off. Okay. Um, so tell us about the slats. So sheep slats in a calf, in a calf pen uh, or calf shed. Yeah, well, I suppose they're not specifically they're multi-purpose. Anyway. She- they're multi-purpose. Yeah, really, yeah. like it's um, predominantly they've been used in, in sheep houses. Um, the slats are 200 kg point weight slats, so they'll take anything up to 200 kgs at any one point. Um, we also have slats that are 350 kg point slats, so they'll take they'll take weanlings or in some cases um, donkeys or something light like that. You know, if you if you want to do, if you want to. I do like that. We've um, we've done them in a lot of abattoirs now. They're kind of um, used in in pig sheds. They're they're used across the board really in livestock housing. But um, the key benefit here is um, to have a completely dry area and no puddles, no calves sucking dirty water or muck or anything like that. It's just cleanliness and. Um, cut down on respiratory diseases and any infections you can pick up and that was the main source of this. Now they did work out very reasonable compared to concrete slats. Um, you're talking somewhere around 60 euros per square meter to put down plastic slats. Um, but again it worked out really well here. It's not a deep tank, it's only about a four foot deep tank. Um, it's an agitation point outside. Um, and it just works out really well. Like it, it's, we've, it, we've it done here as well into the feeding stations where you can see right up into the feeding station, it's slatted out so there's no dirt whatsoever yeah. at any stage for the calf to pick up. Um, so any, so in, this, in this here, are they running that way? Yes, Jason or, this or? way now, they're running this way and there's a center support wall here because you can really only span up to four point or sorry, 2.4 meters on the fiberglass beam. Now you can get stainless steel beams that will span beyond the three meters. Yeah. Um, but stainless steel is a bit more expensive than fiberglass. Okay. Um, so again, it's if you have to span longer, you can span longer. But ideally, um, ideally you kind of go with a, t- a four foot or, or sorry, an eight foot width channel is ideal. Hmm for the fiberglass but again it's down to what you need in design but as you can see here like it's plenty wide enough for for what's what's going on here and that's a this is a a quite a big calf shed so you're you're talking about calf capacity in this shed of of up 160 170 calves um but you can see on this side it's it's plenty capacity really for what what it needs to do like right um but like i i was supposed to look it was done for last winter i didn't really know how it was going to, how, how the farmer satisfaction was going to be with it. But I spoke to Ben earlier and he's really happy with it. Um, um, just he's really happy that it is lovely and clean. It saves, mm-hmm. saves on a lot of straw. He's bedding, he's bedding um, twice a week now instead of every second day. Okay. Um, kind of respiratory issues have been completely reduced. Like it's, he's really happy on that side of it. And animal health is a big, it, it, it's kind of really showing up well in the animal health side of things. Combined with labour saving as well, I think he's, he's got a few well, yeah. big benefits from the whole thing. But it's it, yeah, it's look, it's an aspect. It, it's um, it hasn't really been done a whole pile in calf sheds that I've come across, but it's certainly something people are looking at um, more and more now. Anything to cut down like straw is getting harder and harder to get every year. Yeah, and especially this year, good quality straw like so, um, like it's you're talking about a lifetime job with it really. Like you know, it's. It's there year and year, um, and again, if you need to go at the heavier slat, you can, like you know. Right. So as we walk into the heifer pens here, your say your gates here are higher than the gates here. The re- and reason being, say. Well, this was a panel gate, really. Like so, it's, look, you can go at a lower panel if you need be, but. Um, it, the, the main reason here is just, uh, it was really just down to a hanger uh, issue. Like the hanger here has a piece coming off the side of it. 
Um, so basically you can tie into your gate, otherwise then you'd have a hanger and you'd have a separate panel here if you wanted to. Yeah. So it's really just a customer choice really, like you know, yes. it's the, you can go with a lower size panel with the same height as these gates or you can go with a higher 1400 panel. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's, it's just, um, normally, normally you wouldn't have panels that long inside in sheds now, they'd be generally a lot smaller, but just the, you were talking about a five bay shed here divided into three pins, where ordinarily you'd have five pins for the five bays. Okay. Maybe just to finish then your side panel on the left there, it's a blank Yeah, it was, just, it? it was just a blank really, look it was just um, an air a space that was left over. Um, so just to stop, stop anything going out there and just wanted to cheat it there just to stop drafts coming in. Yeah. Well, it's just a nice little feature. Um, and again okay. you have the step here in the sliding door there. So in summary, Jason, from a steel perspective or whatever, what maybe list the three most important things in a calf shed that you look for or try and get the farmer? Well, the most important thing with a calf shed is, uh, is flexibility. Um, that you can um, adjust, the, we'll say, adjust the feeding space for the calf is a, a very important. You have access to the pins is another usually important aspect of it and cleanliness then. You know, health. You're you're trying to reduce health issues. You're trying to keep the calves nice and dry and clean, and you're trying to give them the best possible start you can. Um, and that's, I suppose, in, in short, that's what this shed was really designed for. And there was a lot of thought put into it, on on behalf of Bin as well. Like you know, he knew exactly what he wanted, which was always great. Um, and the good thing about it was he was open to different ideas and doing things differently. Um, I think initially we were talking about getting concrete slats in here and stuff like that and it was working out the cost of it and you know and this was a far better solution. Yeah. You know, it's nice warm as well. The plastic is a lot warmer than the, the slats. You don't have the build up of the wet between the bands on the slats. Yes. So you've a lovely dry area like yeah, it's yeah. yeah. And it is as you say probably warmer for the calf decided to lie there. Yeah. It's a bit and, more forgiving. And the cost perspective, it's a, it's a way cheaper to do, um, mm. to do a the, 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 the green slats than um, versus concrete. Yeah, and easy to install, self-fit nearly. Self-fit, yeah. And again, if you need to take them up again, it's not a big issue to take it up. Last um, question for me, uh, do you fit all the gates then or is it the farmer does that part or say bolt in the brackets on the wall? It's very much down to, sometimes the farmers will fit them, um, sometimes we'll fit them. We always do a detailed drawings of calf houses so pole position drawing so the farmer knows or the builder who's doing the job knows exactly where to put the pole and um, generally we measure as soon as the poles are, are set right and then you um you make gates if we're kind of um doing sheds further afield now in england we're doing a lot of calf sheds in england at the moment does you kind of a lot of those farms are happy to go with once you get the design layout of the shed they're happy to go and make the gates and make everything ready to go and send it out in one pallet yeah. and they'll install everything then based mm. on you have the internal dimensions of the shed and um, that works out quite well as well okay but so as you said about the market you're covering ireland and you're covering the uk um ireland northern ireland yeah and the uk yeah um calf sheds are becoming more popular in in england now and in scotland and wales as well like um and grants there seem to be coming into play as well. Yeah, it's, to promote. it's a bit kind of hit and miss, but um, it, it's depending on what region you're talking. There's different types of grants for different areas. Um, it's the one thing I suppose we kind of do a bit better here if um, in some in some aspects with the TAMs. But um, again, there's, there's drawbacks to that as well, I suppose, in some, some instances. But um, they're, I think they've... I suppose in, in England there, it's just, um, it's a bit harder to, I don't think they've been hit as bad this year with milk price um, as what we have here. And there's more of a demand to keep going yeah. over there. Yeah. That's a very yeah. fun I don't think it there. dropped as far as we'd see that the price didn't drop as far as what no, it did here. No. And, uh, and yet it was at their highest level last year. They haven't yeah. seen in many years. So yeah. um, there wasn't much of a, a, of a drop off. No. Um, this year, but this, so I suppose the, there's more confidence in the market there. Yeah. And, you know, well, like there's confidence here as well, but it's not as, um, I suppose, the, the back end of this year, but weather and everything has really kind of Correct. stalled it. Yeah. yeah. No, Shiluk, thanks for your time today and no. <laughs> best of luck with things. Thank thanks you.